Hello, fellow painters. Rick here for, uh, what is this, Painting Happy Little Minis? You've been gone so long. I, I can't remember anymore. <laughs> I yeah. think it is Painting Happy Little Minis. It is Painting Happy Little Minis. My friend. <laughs> my friend. Uh, I'm Rick. Mate. I'm Dave. <laughs> and uh, we're painting some Song of Ice and Fire. We are. Which is super cool by uh, Come On. Come On. It was yeah. how they are pronouncing it now. That's, uh, that's kind of funny. Yeah. Yep. In Australia, yeah. uh, like Come On is used a lot. Okay. So, like, there's it's a figure of speech. C apostrophe M O N. Makes sense. So, then. Yeah. yeah. They were, um, I guess that's the new branding and how they want to be referred to as come on, as in come on play. Okay. Which is part of their, like, OP programs. Okay. Yeah. So. Well, there we go. It's going to take a little bit to uh, get used to, I think. What was that, Leona? Is that, that's a real thing? Yes, it's yeah, a yeah. real thing. It's a real thing. Yep. <laughs> Cool. But yeah, so uh, I am going to be painting some of the Kranigman. Kranigman trackers. And I'll be doing the Spearwives from the Free Folk. So mine are from the uh, Stark faction. Yes. It's the, the shirt there. And I'm not, I have, I have nothing. Because <laughs> you're, uh, you're purchased. Right. You're, you're not free. Right. Mm, this is that true. Bought by GTM and Alpha Omega Alpha Hobbies. Alpha Omega Hobbies, Up yeah. in Boston. Yeah, these guys so, are awesome. Nice. But it is a cool hat. It is. Cool. Did you get that from Oz? I did. Awesome. Uh, I spent uh, almost a whole week at Gamma kind of hanging out with Oz and uh, Jason from Realm Smith. Cool. So, yeah. Excellent. Yeah, it was a good time. Nice stuff. Bunch of nerds. Nerds! <laughs> nerds! <laughs> so how's everybody doing today? Who we got in the chat? Um, well, we have uh, Demon Hall over here. Hey, guys. Good to see you. Good to see, see you, you as well. Let's see what we got over here. So we've got Chris. Clive, um, Steve, Rad Algren, because you know that's Just cool. Just you love the name. I love that name. name. Yep. Super cool. Byron, why can't I see you in Roku? That's interesting. Roku, no. How are, are we on? Are we working on YouTube? We had troubles last week where we weren't on YouTube, but I think Leona was streaming on YouTube today. Mm -hmm. So fingers crossed. That'll be sorted soon. Yeah. Yeah, it's on Okay. I think we had uh, so we Kelly in there. Kelly. Hey, Kelly. Cat is in there. And Kale Swift. Kale, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, Game Trade Media, they're on there too. It's Who are they? Nice. Uh, you know, they're they're a fun little um, platform for people to watch cool videos about the games that they enjoy. All right. Yeah. That sounds pretty so like a cool idea. We should. We should get in on that. Josh uh, Whiteley is there. <laughs> Drew from One Inch Heroes. It was cool seeing him on the. Yeah, show it was great to week. great to have Drew back on. For sure. James is with us. Hey, James. He asked what's shaken. Um, it's funny that you should say that, James. Uh, I was talking to the guys from Army Painter War Paints. Okay. Yep. And. Um, we want to do a fun video with them utilizing their uh, d the dip shade. Okay. But getting a big vat. Okay. Like gallons yeah. of it. I am not getting it. No, no, you're not. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> you're no, not getting it. No, no. <laughs> okay. Ready. Oh, for your dragon. For a dragon. Oh, Another okay. big yep. dragon. Dip it in there with like tongs. I right, spray it. Dip yeah. it in with tongs. And then flick, flick it. it. <laughs> oh, that's going to be the worst part. Yeah. That's going to be a dangerous part. I'll have to get I some. Think... Uh, Perspects to put over the some Tyvek uh, suits, yeah, yeah, and goggles. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> we have to go full, uh, full MythBusters on it. Yeah, yes, that sounds cool. Yeah. Awesome. Shane says hi. Chris Gorka is with us. Uh, Rad says doing good, guys. Trying to finish the last big build in KT uh, starter train. Might be trying to paint too much detail. Oh. Mini painting so he says Dave paints crotch first for uh, safety reasons. Yep, exactly. I like to think it'll work out. Start from the middle, the center of the body, and work out. <laughs> I'm sure that's how it's got to be done. Uh, I've, well, yeah. So tell me um, what you know outside of the fact that the Kanagmen are with House Stark. Okay, they're, they're part of um, they're part of basically the House Reed. House Reed, yeah. Yep. Uh, and because I haven't read much of the books, I read like the first one and a half. Okay. Uh, Leona and I were talking about this. She's a whole book ahead of me. Dang it! Um, 
I know. She was telling me things I'd only ever seen on TV. Okay. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so uh, Howland Reed was um, Ned Stark's um, sort of right-hand man. Right. Um, as far as right-hand banner man. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, it was quite important in uh, all the, the Stark fighting in the... Uh, the rebellion, right, and uh, and after, okay, afterwards. and then um, Howland Reed's kids, the Jojen and Mira, mm -hmm. uh, helped um, take Bran to meet the Three Eyed Raven. That True. is probably the extent. So <laughs> I I took a moment and watched a video before the show here today, and. and uh, about the the chronogman uh, and what they would do, uh, some of the things about them is they they are believed to be short in stature because ancestrally they may have had um, breeding relations with the uh, first men or the children of the forest. Okay. Yeah. Or poor nutrition. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with poor nutrition. So there's that because the, they live in the swamps. Right, and they're known as frog eaters. Right. Yep. Um, they use very primitive um, weaponry in comparison to the other houses Okay. in the Seven Kingdoms in that they tend to use uh, frog spears, round wooden shields, and um, poison darts and arrows. Okay. And most of the other houses feel that they are cowardice because they use guerrilla tactics in their combat oh, right. instead of you know lining up in, in formations. I think Braun would disagree. I would think so too. Yeah. <laughs> you would disagree heartily. So th those are some cool little factoids about them. Okay. And they were actually enemies to the Starks like a thousand years ago in the timeline. Okay. Until um, one of the, the Rickard Stark basically killed the, the Swamp King right. and married and took the, his daughter as his wife. Okay. Which basically cemented their ally, oh, his yeah. allies. Yeah. Okay, there we go. I wonder how much influence they had then over uh, over the next thousand years. Probably not much. Yeah, I wonder if it was like they were always sort of the the right hand of uh, mm -hmm. the Starks kind of thing. True. Must the other been. cool thing is their houses and um, castles f float on the swamp. Okay. And are all co in constant movement around the swampy areas. Okay. That's kind of funny. I, as soon as you said, like, castles and swamp, yeah. I had a flashback to um, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Okay. <laughs> we built our first castle in the swamp. <laughs> it fell over. It, it sank. <laughs> it sank. <laughs> Second castle, and it sank too. It sank as well. <laughs> and our third castle, Burned down, fell over, and then sank it to the and swamp. And then sank it to the swamp. But the fourth one, the fourth stayed up. That's pretty accurate. Yep. But as far as like the spearwives, on the back of the box here it says, in the south, women are a rarity on the battlefield. But in the north, the free folk know that women are quite capable of standing in the line of battle in defense of their homeland. The spearwives may not be equipped for a vanguard, Yet, uh, as flankers or as rear guard, they can protect the line against any charge and deliver surprisingly um, surprising attacks at range. Their namesake spears may be crude, but they're plentiful, cheap, and quite deadly to anyone foolish enough to underestimate them, both in melee and at short range. Ah, oh, so. sounds like they might have a short range attack. I'm going to pause my painting for a second so I can check out the card. Uh -huh. The unit card. Speaking of dragons, did you guys get the picture of mine? Kelly, I think we may have. I'm not sure. I spilled an entire bucket of that stuff on an apartment floor once. That carpet did not appreciate. Oh, the the yeah. um, painter uh, dip. I think that's where you have to like slice around it. Huck is with us. Hi, Huck. Jacob says hi. These shirts. 
Oh, okay. No. This is um, Kelly Preston, I think. Kelly Preston, yeah. Okay. That's interesting. So they have, um, yeah, there's probably some of the close cam. You can see uh, they have two, two different attack profiles. There's a ranged attack profile and a um, melee profile. Okay. They need four plus to hit on both. Their, um, the number of dice they roll is seven if they have three ranks. Okay. Seven if they have two ranks, and then three if they ha only have one rank remaining. Okay. So that's a pretty good, um, uh, I guess, degradation okay. there. Because normally you'd see a drop in that second number um, as, okay. the, as a unit goes back to the thing. Um, over here, spear toss, short range, so that's up to six inches. Okay. Um, and crude spear, when charging, this attack gains sundering, which is minus one to the defense save rolls for the enemy. So nice. that's good against anybody that's got armor of four, or three or four, okay. like cavalry and um, some of the uh, like veterans of the watch and okay. that kind of thing. Anybody with a like heavy armor and a shield. Nice. So I think these would, they would be great coming in on the flanks because the I think the free folk raiders are a four point unit. The spear wives are a five-point unit. Okay. So um, you wouldn't want to have too many of these. But having them on the flank they would be great. One on each end of the flank. Yeah. yeah. To um, to help those masses of the the raiders in the center. To, the raiders are going to tie up the enemy. Mm-hmm. And then you can bring in those on the flank. Nice. Because you get when you charge, you get um, certain bonuses. Okay. And I think when you charge in the flank, you reduce your opponent's armor save by one anyway. So the sundering gives them an additional minus one. Nice. Minus two. Nice. Yeah, don't underestimate them. They're Very good. Cool. Nice stuff. And I think one of the other boxes in the office is a free folk. The free folk raiders? Yeah. Yep. Yep. They look good. Had a lot of fun playing uh, Song of Ice and Fire with the stocks. Stock bowmen are great. Are they? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> when you, uh, if you get a chance to like basically stand still with them, not move before you fire, you um, basically double the number of shots. Nice. Which is like, like a huge That's thing. That's devastating. It's basically like putting a second unit on the table. Right. Um, Morgan says, what are you painting? Well, I think we hit it already yep. for him. Hopefully. Um, Mike G says that he is building, or they are building a uh, Malifaux werewolf guys today. Oh, cool. I realize Excellent. it's not the assembly I like, but the smell of Damia plastic cement. It's like <laughs> banana s slurpy plus. Mm. Right. <laughs> That's funny. And then Dave, inspired by last week's show, I got two chromatids or chroma, chromatids? Chromatids? Mm. Chromatids. Mm. First time to paint Min minis. minis. Oh, nice. fantastic. Great. Good job, Cat. Guerrilla warfare tactics are hit and run sabotage. Yeah, yes. Um, rock on, Mel, with the Kickstarter campaign. Oh yeah. Mel says, "Oh, here you are." <laughs> <laughs> uh, which one yep. of you is painting the dragon, mommy? Sadly, neither of us. Neither of us at the moment. When they uh, when they come out, we might have to fight for it. Yeah? Yeah. I just want to paint the dragons. Right. <laughs> That's okay. I'll paint, we'll paint dragons next okay. week. Yeah. You're gone next week, right? Uh, I am gone next Thursday. I'm okay. here on Tuesday. Okay. Yeah, next Thursday I head off to Adepticon. Right. Which will be great. Going to go see all the peoples. See all the peoples. Uh, Mel, the train shooter. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mel's going to be arriving in Chicago next Monday. Nice. Yep. So he's going to be there for a whole week. In the middle of his Kickstarter? In the middle of his Kickstarter. Hashtag stress. Well, no, it should be fine. It's Well, <laughs> in, when you're running a Kickstarter that's, that's focused on a particular um, target market. Which happens to be at a depth. <laughs> at a total at a depth. <laughs> Being there is also a good idea. Absolutely. To answer any questions. So, 
That'll be good. Yeah, the Kickstarter is going very well. Um, we're very excited about it um, for a terrain book called, oh, that's all me, sorry. Uh, a terrain book called uh, Terrain Essentials. Yes. So it's uh, definitely cool. We're funded and we're adding some extra stretch goals at the moment um, to fund uh, sort of additional sections or additional, mm -hmm. uh, basically expansions to some of the chapters. Nice. Um, which is really cool. And last night we put up, uh, we just put up a stretch goal for making it a hardback book. Nice. So we're excited to, uh, to get it to, to that stage. That'll be really cool. Mm hmm very nice. Very nice indeed. Just kicking it. But yeah, we had a uh, an awesome launch party on uh, Friday. Right. So uh, Mel, the terrain tutor, has an excellent YouTube channel. Um, lo uh, over 500 tutorials. Oh my god. Tutorial videos on there. Or at least over 500 videos. Right. Let's say 400 of the tutorials. Right, 100 of them are just... Uh, like, Chitty Chen? Well, yeah, and uh, every every Sunday night, Mel does a, um, a Sunday nighter uh, where he answers questions. Basically, people oh. can fire in questions like a, like about Like a terrain. campfire. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, cool. Um, he has, uh, yeah, so he sets up like a Google Doc, Google Doc, and people can jump in there and put okay. in questions. That's cool. I think um, this Sunday night one, they had, there were like 25 questions they had to go, they went mm -hmm. through and answered. But, uh, yeah, so setting up a, a live uh, live stream for the launch, and uh, we we're, I think we we're kind of expecting that we'd be on there for about like an hour or two. Okay. And things were going really well with the launch, mm -hmm. so we stayed on until uh, until we funded. Which was seven and, oh, not, seven, not quite, not it was a, six hours and 58 minutes. Yep. <laughs> so, yeah. super, uh, super exciting. So if you're watching and you haven't backed it yet, it's called the Terrain Essentials. Terrain Essentials. On Kickstarter. Go check it out. Yep. They're very close to breaking another barrier, yep. I would say. Another stretch goal. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, no, it's doing really, really well. We're really excited about it. Uh, we've had some uh, retailers from around the, around the world mm -hmm. uh, ask us if we're doing a retailer pledge. And okay. I've been saying that we'd... We're not planning on a retailer ple pledge because we're going to be putting the book into distribution mm -hmm. and um, clients, game uh, distributors being one of those. Yeah. So, but that's all post Kickstarter. That'll be like March next year. Yeah. For that. But uh, yeah, yeah, very, very exciting. We've got a lot of people who are joining in that uh, haven't backed to Kickstarter before. Really? Yeah. So. So their first time. Uh oh. They're yeah. gonna get addicted. <laughs> become a super backer in a week. Do not become addicted to Kickstarter. You will resent its absence. <laughs> but, uh, That's also true. Yeah. Nice. Let's see. Which one of you are painting dragon or I already looked at said that? Yep. Can you show a close up of the box? Absolutely. Oh yeah, sure. Um, I don't know if this will. Let's let's do it under here. Oh, okay. Okay. So we have the. This is for the spear wives. That. Um, so, check out that awesome artwork. That's yeah, super good. Mm -hmm. yep. So this is the spear wives for the free folk. I'm going to flip it over and show the back. There we go. So in there you get uh, 13 minis. Yep, uh, there's one matriarch and uh, four each of the, the three sculpts. The spear wives. Which is really nice. Uh, yeah. And then you see you get the unit card, the attachment card. The attachment card is a matriarch. Okay. So you don't have to include her, but if you want to pay the extra point, you can have her as a leader. Okay. Um, and you, the movement tray has 12 slots. So if you put the matriarch in, you drop one of the... Oh, okay. Um, one of the any one of the, the other uh, ones. any any of the other ones out. Yeah, and I did ha I did pull the matriarch art out as one of the ones I'm painting. Oh, cool. I think cool. I gave the the leader of your group out, uh, a pull out as well. No, sadly no. No. No, you got two of the. Oh, did two I? Of those guys. Oop. That's okay. We'll survive. And here's the uh, the cover of the Chronic Man. 
another awesome piece of artwork. Very uh, atmospheric. Yes. I like what you're doing over there. It looks like you're mixing some greens and browns. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to get this, um, you see the, the sort of depth around there? Yeah. The depth in there. There's lots of, they have lots of brown leathers uh, that they're wearing. Um, you see the braces and that sort of thing. Uh, so I wanted to almost have that green come out from that. Yeah. You, they're going to have a very, it's a very desaturated um, palette, as you'd find in swamps. Right. Some kind of small plants. But, uh, so they look great. And the, on the back, again, with those 13 minis in there mm -hmm. for each of the three sculpts. And the warden. So the warden's, you can tell he's a commander because he's got his foot up on a rock. Ah, uh, the rock. That's the difference. And if you look at the, yep. the matriarch here. Also foot, foot on a rock. Front. Foot on a rock. Mm. It's very, uh, very classic. Uh, miniature thing to do. Okay. They put a foot on a rock to show that that's a leader. Show sure, that's a leader, yep. Nice. It's that, It's or it's pointing, or it's taking like the helmet off. Okay. So Interesting. Yeah. If you've got a, a army that wears a lot of helmets, like mm -hmm. Space Marines. Right. Yep. But, uh, yep, there we go. So again, you get a, a card for uh, the unit and a card for the uh, attachment. Now I have to look at that. You're all good. Uh, is that zombie like unicorn you showed on the show? Oh, the chromatics was the zombie like oh, unicorn. Oh, okay, cool. Cool. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's right. We were talking about it. Um, I didn't just, didn't, I completely forgot the name. Sorry, cat. Okay, the chronic men also have two. Um, Two different attacks. There's a ranged uh, chronic bow, and then the tracker's blades is their melee attack. Four plus for both to hit. They got one less pip of armor than the spear wives do. Okay. Uh, they've got their speed is one faster. Chronic uh. bow with short range, uh, but you can see there that their degradation. They start at eight, eight, six, four. Okay. Which is a bit different to the um, the spear wives, and the tracker tracker's blades. Obviously they're no in, well, not no air, but they're not quite as good at melee as they are at shooting. Right. I guess they have six, five, and three as the number of dice, depending on the number of uh, rounds. So they're all Robin's merry men. Yep. Oh, and th <laughs> this is great. Uh, after this unit completes a maneuver or a retreat action, this unit may make one free ranged attack action. Ouch. So you could be in combat, decide to run away, mm -hmm. and then as you get back to where you've run. You turn around and shoot him one more time. Shoot him one more time, exactly. I like it. These uh, these guys are also five points. Mm. I think one of the other boxes is the scorpion. Oh yeah, the the scorpion um, ballista. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, I think you already had one of those, right? Yeah, yeah. We had a look at that. Um, I think towards the end of last year. Yeah. Yeah, we were lucky enough to get a uh, a very early. A copy of it, but um, yeah, that can be pretty devastating on the on the battlefield. I have no doubt. Yep. I think it looks sick. Does look good. Very nice. Yeah. Um, Mini painting studio says I'm going to be going to play a game of breach storm this weekend. Oh. And James says I'm painting a breach storm right now, working on the home uh, home world confederacy. What's breach storm? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't heard of that. Um, many painters that they'll be uh, streaming one of the cat people from Breach Storm. Mel yeah. says, Dave, you realize that if we hit a target while you're two-timing me with Rick, I'm going to do the update and send all the backers here to call you a slacker. I will like that. <laughs> don't encourage him. Please, please don't encourage him. Because... Because I'll actually do it. <laughs> um, Mini Painter says, right. "Can he get his copy flocked? The book and, and not just hard, a hard oh, the, <laughs> flocked as well." We're looking into that as a um, as an option as a like a texture on the cover. Fuzzy wuzzy book. A fuzzy book, but yeah. it's yeah, all, all flocked. Mm. I I I kid. It's not all going to be flocked. Just the the logo. 
Oh, okay. The logo. <laughs> How cool would that be? That would be actually pretty cool. <laughs> they only make like 10 of them. 10 flocked books. 10 flocked books. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it'd be like on the 10th day of Christmas. <laughs> yep. Yeah, that's actually a pretty, pretty cool. I finally got Star Trek Catan. Byron. Cool. Very nice. Uh, James says, I have both core sets too. I'm doing the home, Homeworld Confederacy for my stream and the yeah. Zrenthrar cat people off screen. Nice. And then uh, Drew from One Inch is saying, I'm working on my new Shadow Spear set. Oh, cool. Mel Bowes says, what you do in the pr with your book in the privacy of your bedroom is down to you. <laughs> but wait for the hardback version. It'll be more durable. Yep. <laughs> Exactly. Perfect. Thank you, Mel. When he says wait for it, he actually means get on and back now. That's what, yeah. To get, yeah. To get, us, get us to that to that stretch goal. Chris says, I don't have the funds to be a super backer. Neither do I. So you know how I became a super backer? I mean, besides backing a bunch of projects. Besides backing all the projects. <laughs> that, that appears to be the quickest way to do it. Another way you can do it, and it doesn't yeah. cost a lot of money, is if you go in and you hit a bunch of Kickstarters that have like a dollar pledge. Okay. And you just yeah. pledge a dollar. Support right. them with a dollar. Uh, once you, and then you can get super backer pretty fast that okay. way as well. But oh, that's, right. okay. that get, becoming a super backer doesn't mean anything outside of you are a super backer. It doesn't give you any bonuses or benefits to anything. You say that now. I think that's what you're required to say, isn't it? Yes, pretty much. Like the first rule of super backer club? Yes, yeah, don't talk, don't about, talk about super backer club? Yeah. Yeah. Sort of. I bet you that's what it is. <laughs> I bet you. Because, you know, sometimes, you know, the wallet is light and you got to be like, I can only get. Uh, I can show some some mild support. Not much love. Yeah, and then hope that once it funds, you can be like, "How long is your backer kit open?" <laughs> right. And then you can go back in and get what you want later. Yep. Really, the best way to sh to uh, support share it is the share. Yep. Share it around. All right. Well, I need not that. So what I'm doing here is uh, mixing in a little bit of bone white into the U.S. dark green. Okay. Yeah, just for the highlights on the green. Um, so lots of really nice sort of crisp lines on the cloak that are taking the highlighting really well. But uh, what I'll be able to do as well is mix in the, uh, the bone white into the browns. Okay. So you get sort of that, a similar... Um, Desaturation across the um, across the model, okay. so it'll have that sort of murky, camouflaged kind of look. But as long as you're putting in some good highlights, you'll still get that pop. Right. Who doesn't like some murky? Murky, yeah. I was gonna say, yeah. As soon as I said it, I was like, oh, yeah, it makes it makes your model look murky. I like murky. <laughs> That's a good word. Oh, it's a great word, but you don't really want it <laughs> in regards to miniatures. I like those guys, Rick. They're nice and murky. Nice and murky. Murky. Excellent. So, yes. you haven't mentioned it yet. How was Gamma? So Gamma last week, the Gamma trade show, for any, anybody watching that's not familiar, is a trade show for the board game industry where publishers, retailers, and um, uh, distributors come together, do workshops, announce all sorts of cool new product coming out for the year and we were there last week doing um, interviews with a bunch of the uh, publishers and got some really cool a look at some really cool games coming out and uh, Leona has been painstakingly uh, putting those up on our YouTube channel and sharing them on Facebook and everything so if you missed out you can uh, check out some of those videos um, but, which are great um, God's Forge by Atlas Games is really fun. What's that? What's the, what's so, the approach? Of that so game? that one is you're basically um, 
draw a card, play a card type situation, and uh, you're trying to basically be the uh, one to get the most points at the end and screw over your opponents. Okay. Pretty simple card game. Right. Um, and, but it, it was a lot of fun, and it's really got some cool table presence, and which is one of the things I like about um, tabletop games, is that yeah. they have a cool presence. I'm all about it. And then um, if right now it seems like roll and rights are really popular as far as the board game side. Okay. And um, just quickly, explain yeah. to me a roll and write. All right, so roll and write is you have like grids or... Um, a, like a sheet of paper, and it can play like hundreds of people at one right. time. Yeah. And so uh, one of them would be you're rolling the dice and you're trying to collect similar numbers to make a chain or something, or uh, you're trying to, uh, like in Welcome to, build a community around different uh, um, cards that flip, because it's more of like a flip and write instead of a roll and write. Okay. And then uh, one of the ones that was announced there was called <clears throat> Floor Plan. So as you're rolling the dice to this, you're trying to build a four by four room, and you're basically doing a floor plan for a house. Okay. And you're building the, and, and there's a, a timer and how many rounds are played. But at the end of the the rounds, if you have so many four by four rooms, you get this many points. If you have a, a hallway attaching two uh, five by fives, you get different points. Okay. And if you make a room or a connection of rooms that are similar to one of the architect cards that are shown you get bonus points as well. Okay. And uh, those are really fun and really popular. And, um, you know, just for, like, getting a bunch of people together to do something think, think quick and fun. Quick uh, quick action. Yeah. And as I say, it's, like, completely scalable. Yep. Right. So those were fun. And then uh, got to play Dungeons and... Or, how I almost said Dungeons oh. and Dragons. But I got to play Pop Pathfinder. Fire. Yeah. Uh, second edition with uh, Jason Bullman, who is the lead designer of second edition for Paizo. Awesome. And he DM'd it just like he did last year, the playtest version of it, but we got to play in the final rules because it's yeah. off the print. Nice. And um, so that was like the first look that anybody got of the actual final rules right. of, the, of the game. And um, that was a lot of fun. And Oz from Alpha Omega. Cool. And Jason from Realmsmith. And um, uh, man, uh, Carissa, who is a freelance uh, industry person, right? And we all played it and had a blast. Excellent. Yeah. And that was uh, streamed on Twitch. It was right. streamed on Twitch. Cool. Mm -hmm. Excellent. I bet you were uh, really enjoying that. I was. Yeah. <laughs> imagine well one of the fun things about it is you know we're trying to <clears throat> obviously we're, we, we want to make twitch um, one of our main platforms for streaming okay and we based on that that stream we actually hit a couple more achievements on twitch which was nice because we had uh, over 100 people watching at one time and chatting in the in the uh, chat so that hit some um, Achievements, which are important in you know getting more be more access to how Twitch works. Okay. All right. Cool. What green are you using, Dave? Uh, I'm using uh, the the main green here. The sort of green is uh, Vallejo model color uh, US dark green. So this is a great one for um, okay. for trousers or pants on. Uh, your American troops. Trousers? Pants, as the Americans would say. Pants. Pants. <laughs> pants. Okay. On the pants. On the pants. On the uniform pants. Pants. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, just starting with that. Actually, uh, we started with a mix of that and... Um, where's Josh? Josh, Josh For Mini Penny? Charred Brown. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and highlighting it with uh, by mixing in some of the um, bone white from the game color range. Nice. Don't do that. Uh, I just got out some colors to. See that little face sort of tucked in away here, so that won't take too long to paint. And I think I'm going to give him some blonde hair. Nice. Some blonde beard here to help him stand out from the mm -hmm. the rest of the. The browns and greens. 
Looks pretty good. That. And then I can go back and highlight some of the browns. And, uh, this guy's got quite a bit of uh, chain mail on. Looks like okay. he's got some chain mail, like a chain mail coif around his uh, neck there. Maybe that's not a coif, would it be a, a shawl? Let me see. Look, it's just sort of, it's not, doesn't, oh, yeah. appear, doesn't appear to be running over his head, but. Yeah. And then uh, some more chain mail around the uh, upper arms. Okay. So he's probably wearing a chain mail tunic, but only a short one because it doesn't appear to come below his waist there. Makes sense. So. Uh, I couldn't pick that one up. Wish I could have on release, but maybe later. It's James talking about a product. I really want the new Abaddon, though. Oh, yeah. Bruce Gorka says, Tactical Rock for the win. I'm waiting to see new Sinesh. I played Black Legion, but the Empire's Children were my first chapter. It's coming from Mini Painting Studios. Cool. Melbo says, Encur consider me encouraged. Yes, we are giving you assurance. <laughs> 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 cool. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, uh, Leona, whenever you sort of come out and go, you want to see some minis? It always reminds me of uh, that scene in Frozen. That's right. Wanna you want to build a snowman? Yes. Wow, look at you <laughs> harmonizing. What? What? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, check out the first one. Mini Painting Studio with Arena Rex, the Hell Nikki. Hell Nikki. Nice. Which one's the Hell Nikki? Is it the the uh, the crazy? I don't know. Sort of yellow fish beast. That looks like a hippocampus on the right, but it, that might be it. I don't know. No, well, hippocampus doesn't have legs. It just, yeah, it just has a, uh, it just like has a mermaid leg. Yeah, 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 yeah fish it's leg. Just yeah, fish tail. Uh, the one on the left, I think, is part of the Ludus Magnus. Um, faction. Okay. Uh, Josh can give us the corrections there, obviously. Corrections in the uh, corrections yeah. in the chat, please, Josh. Yeah. But yeah, they look great. Jason says the horse. Horse. Cool. Uh, Dave needs auto tune. For sure. Yes. If I had an auto tune, I'd go for it. But. Nate Webster with some terrain. Yep. So this is. Uh, I think this is from the the flesh eater courts. Okay. So the the steps there lead up to that platform. Mm -hmm. Where a um, there's a throne. Okay. If it's on that, pl that platform as well. Nice. Um, I only say that because obviously all of the the skeletal remains, ah, yeah. the bloody skeletal remains down the bottom. Which look you amazing. Just imagine whoever's sitting on that throne. Yes, just chowing down. down. Yep. That looks fantastic. I love the um, so sort of the variations in the the colors through there. Um, but the like the big chunk that's torn out of the um, th that landing mm -hmm. stone, all right, and the way that Nate's worked on that looks great. Yeah, really nice. Stephen Tracy, Wood Elf Archer. Okay, that Isn't is that from cool? WizKids. Excellent. Is that a, a magical arrow? It could be. I think. Yeah, I think that. Uh, I think it would be. I'm getting a bit of a, a purple glow. Yeah. Kind of look for it. That's cool. Yeah, I like very the, nice. that sort of addition. Like the, like the leaves. The leaf green on the on the uh, front there. Whenever I played, uh, used to play D and D, mm -hmm. and there was like the option, like or not the option, but you see like, oh, let's get this magic, this particular magic arrow. Right. I was always like, I don't know if I want a magic arrow. You just want a magic bow. I have a magic bow, then all the arrows that become, I fire are essentially magical. well, essentially <laughs> like magical. But yeah, you fire one. It's like ah, now I'm gonna go and collect it. Makes sense. <laughs> if I don't get a chance to come back to this room, Ross says. Uh, Blood Reavers here looks pretty good. Yep. Yeah. From uh, Age of Sigma. Man. Yeah. The one on the right with the top knot. Yep. And that, uh, the, yeah, the face paint and the brand on his chest there. Oh, yeah. You can see that? Yep. yep. The Chaos Star. Dang. Nice work. Yeah, nice good work, Ross. Good one. Kelly's Rem Remoraz. That looks That's so right. good. And the, uh, the base. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I love the the remoraz, but the the base as well. If like from these these angles, it mm -hmm. looks it looks like a piece of ice. Yeah, yeah. The glacial Fantastic. rock, glacial ice. David Moffat with yeah. a night haunt. Yeah. I can't remember which uh, what what the name of this particular model is, but uh, that's from the box, right? The box set. No, I don't think so. No, I think it's 
I, I could be wrong, but I think it's one of the, um, the separate minis. Mm. But yeah, I think um, the work that David's been doing on his uh, Night Haunts is just great. What is the what is the name of the, the Harry Potter female wizard that sees the, the dead flying horses in the first in the books, and talks about in Harry Potter? Yeah, uh, Lu Luna, Luna, Luna Lovegood. Yeah. yeah, she's the only one that can see those on the yep. on the table. Until you've seen a de uh, dead Someone dead body, yeah. yeah, seen somebody die, yeah. yeah. Carl Lundstrid, uh, Reaper Bones. This kind of reminds me of the old EverQuest mage, the okay. elven princess on the cover of EverQuest. Okay. Um, yeah. The color scheme and everything looks really yeah. cool. It does look good. I like the, um, the use of the. Oh, you're right. No worries. Uh, I was gonna say the. I like the um, the blues and the with the auburn hair. Mm -hmm. I think it's a really nice combination. Stephen Hurdle. I do not know what miniature line this is from. It's a crazy Oni though. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It looks really good. It, uh, it's. Yep. Um, I would almost want to say like a turtles theme thing because it has a kind of an animated feel to it, but I'm probably wrong as I usually am. Quite possibly, but yeah. I, I really like, I love the blue skin. Yeah. yeah, doing a great job on the skin there. Good job, Steve. John Pazinski. Hellhound is from Reaper. The rest are Hero Forge. Jesus, yeah. that Hellhound is sick. Yeah. I mean, they're all good, but that Hellhound rah, it looks like just molten lava. Yeah, it does. It does look yeah. cool, doesn't it? Cracked, uh, mm. cracked lava. It's good, and it looks like some yeah. succubuses in the background. Yeah. Cursed dice with the uh, Cthulhu like um, a monolith looking thing. Yep. You don't want to know what that inscription says. Is there an inscription? Yeah, yeah. It's into the. Oh, into the, the rock. Yeah, yeah. What does it say? Now that you've said it, do know. you know? No, I don't. I, 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 you don't want to know. I don't want to I don't know. Wanna Everybody know. doesn't want to know. Granted, we don't want to get cursed. Yeah. Yeah. You don't want to summon him just right. in case. Oops. <laughs> True. Klaatu Barada necktie. Dang it. Um, Chris Gorka's uh, Gloomhaven minis. You cool. look really good. Yeah. What's the, uh, have you played Gloomhaven? I have not. Okay. I was going to ask about what the uh, the character in the, the middle at the back, in the back the, row. The, all the blue and the purples? Yeah. Yeah. So whatever okay. it is, it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the fantastic, like, sense of light. Yeah. That one. Nice work, Chris. Oh, oh, the Ultra, Ultra Troll. Troll. I think um, I think the Ultra Troll has uh, commented on a few things yeah. uh, yeah, before, yeah. but this is the first first mini that uh, they posted. Frostfang Cavalry from Mantic Games. What from? Uh, it'll be from um, Kings of War. Kings of War. Kings of War Vanguard, possibly. Okay. But uh, I love the the work on the the fur. Mm -hmm. It's looking like it's just a, a whole lot of different washes has been sort of thrown on and blended together. Right. It Even looks those great. Awesome colors, yeah. yeah. It looks really nice. Great job, Jason. The Terracon and an armor dax from Private Press from Monster Apocalypse. Monster Apocalypse. Monster yeah. Apocalypse. Mon so they they had a really fun table set up at uh, at Gamma from Private Press uh, in the demo hall. Okay. Um, Oz and Jason sat down and played it yep. for a, okay. a couple rounds, which was cool. Th that is ridiculously good. Yeah. Yeah, it's fantastic work, Jason. Looks really. I, I love the uh, and the the armor plates. The purple armor plates are great, but the the underskin mm -hmm. is my favorite part. That green tinge to the to that, and also I mean the the upper parts have that yellowish right. feel, which is perfect against the purple. Yep. So great. A oh, Ralph Partha Frost Giant painted as a hill, hill giant. giant. This oh, is old now there's school. A, there's a twist. There's a mm. twist on an old favorite. Right. But uh, no, that looks great. Really, uh, I think the That's yeah, old it, right it works there. perfectly well as a as a hill giant. Mm -hmm. That's great. What's that? Um, is that like birch bark around the base, or is it? Is actually the base a, a piece, a slice of birch? It wasn't tree. originally. Hmm? It wasn't originally. Well, it wasn't originally, but I think it, it is now. Yeah, that and looks that's really what, neat. Uh, Steve's done with that. Yeah, it does look cool. I think Steve was in the chat. Maybe you can uh, respond. And let us that. know. That'll be great. Very cool. Ah, ha -ha. Ah, Dominguez. Oh, man. Yep. I was looking at these yesterday. Um, I did not get these. Right. Because I didn't yep. add, do any of the add-ons. Right. But uh, Josh, the boss, yep. got them. And uh, to see this compared to what it looks like when you come out of the box, right. that is ridiculous. It is spectacular, yeah. <laughs> yep. So I, uh, so you, 
amusingly enough, I mean, I didn't order any, I didn't go in on that Kickstarter, mm -hmm. except a friend of mine who was going in on it, I said, could you get me a box of those huts? <laughs> so oh. I, have, I have those huts okay. at home. Nice. Uh, but yeah, they look great. The, uh, I mean, the, the waddle um, fencing mm -hmm. kind of approach yep. around the bottom is painted beautifully. And the, uh, the stitched together flesh yeah. of it's, skin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, and the, 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 the leathering eye. effect, so that there's different tonal leathers oh. being put together, looks so good. Yep. Man. And that, uh, just that, the edges where they're stitched together. It looks like they're sort of held together with tar, maybe. Yeah. And then, so. Or just really like bloodied. Oh, yeah, blood, like dried blood. Yeah, and yeah. guts. Yeah. 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 You smear it with the blood. Of course. But no, no yeah. fantastic work, everybody. Thank you very much for, um, for uh, posting those. I think uh, we've got uh, a whole bunch more that we'll post it over the weekend. Yeah. That uh, we'll try to snag some for have, Thursday. We'll snag some for Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Steve says it is a piece of birch. Great. Mm -hmm. Cool. Excellent. Hooray! He spotted it. No, good work, Steve. Uh, actually, Steve, Steve also posted um, two, I think they were Reaper miniatures. Uh, or basically, it was the same miniature. Okay. But one that he painted 30 years ago. Yeah. And one that he painted recently. And I was just like, ah, oh, that's fantastic. It was fantastic. super cool. Yep. I, um, it made me think of the first, uh, some of the first minis that I painted. Okay. When I like, really got stuck into, into miniature this. painting. Okay. And uh, one of the first ones was a, uh, a Gretchen from a game called uh, Space Crusade. Okay. And uh, Gretchen holding a blunderbuss. Nice. In yeah. a really odd pose. But uh, I painted that up. She'll be here up. On, on Thursday. I mean, she will. Yeah. 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 Also probably in an odd pose. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll see. <laughs> Uh, and um, yeah, I took it to, to show one of my lecturers, my mm -hmm. uh, illustration lecturer. Okay. Because uh, I was really excited about it. I was doing graphic design at, um, at college. And uh, he looked at it and he turned to me and he said, you know, Dave, I thought you could have done better. <sighs> encouragement. Yep. <laughs> Just that back-ended uh, back yeah. encouragement. So good. He probably, uh, he, he probably had my, uh, my measure at that point. Right. He was like, if I, if I tell him it's good, he's going to go, okay, put it away. And that would be it. I tell him it's not quite good enough. <laughs> the <laughs> challenge. We'll set him on a path yep. that will lead him to Timonium, Maryland. <sighs> wow. 20, uh, eight years later. How about that? Yeah, that's... The world works in mysterious ways. Mysterious. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that was great. It brought back a whole bunch of memories for me, Steve. Thanks very much. Good I'm memories, mostly. I'm so glad that some of my first miniatures are, don't exist in photo form. Well, mine definitely don't. I have no idea where they are now. Because uh, my original Mace Thunder Forge would have been... Oof. I'm talking back to... What was that, 1982? 1980s. I was a, That's I, what I said, 82. No, my first miniature I ever painted, I didn't paint until, nine, like, it would have been 1988, 87. Oh, okay, ready. So, um, yeah, ooh. And I used tester, <laughs> I used tester paints. Right. Which are, you know, the hotness of the time, I guess. At the time? <laughs> or, the, or the only available right. at the time. Yeah, it could be that. I'm just going to take a quick look at Chronic Man. Okay. I'm gonna come back. Originally, I painted the the hands to be uh, leather, wearing be wearing gauntlets, but okay. I decided just to give a little extra pop of color. I'm gonna paint them as uh, skin. Nice. Yeah, I think I'm gonna make the uh, at least one of these spear wives touched by fire. Okay. Like burnt. No, red oh, hand. Oh, okay, red hand. My bad. All right. Ooh. Very cool. It's also kind of interesting is three of these sculpts I'm working on have rocks under their feet. Really? Yeah, so this one, All right, that okay. one, and this one. Well, I think they, well, she's in a very dynamic sort of pose. Mm -hmm. Tripping on so, a rock. Yeah. So, 
if it just had her, mm. um, like the ball of her fit, foot attached to the base, it might fall over. Oh yeah, I bet it would have. As a as a contact point. So maybe it shows the uh, sort of solidarity of the the spear wives, and any of them could be the could be a could leader. be the matriarch. Yes. <laughs> In the GW sculpting, it's very definitely only the leaders. <laughs> right. <laughs> or scouts. Anybody who's sneaky. They're all sneaky. That's true. Timothy Colonna says, hey there, what would Dave Taylor do? <laughs> WWTDD. Hey, Tim, how's it going? Uh, on Saturday, yeah. Saturday, I went up to uh, Cold Wars. Oh yeah, that's right. One of the uh, HMGS East uh, conventions. Okay. And saw my buddy Tim there. And uh, the WWT uh, DTD is uh, from back in the day. Tim actually put together some beer steins. Okay. That had WWDTD. What would Dave Taylor do on them? Right. So, it was a, we had a good chuckle about that. Nice. Definitely cool. Bunch of old school miniature folk doing yep. old school things. Oh, doing old school things. <laughs> yep. Tim's actually working on a uh, on his own game, miniature game. Nice. Um, called uh, Trilaterum. Trilaterum. Yep. It's a uh, sort of hard sci-fi okay. kind of game. Um, very. Uh, it's fifteen mil. Very retro kind of uh, feel. One of the alien races he has is uh, Mushroom Men. Ah, oh, kind yeah. of like the old Myconids from D and D. Possibly, I don't know what they are. Mushroom people. Mushroom people. Mm -hmm. uh, probably the same. <laughs> probably very similar. Then. But uh, yeah, so very cool. Got to. Uh, Head up and take, in, uh, take a few copies of my book up there for okay. a couple of the vendors to sell. Um, I got to actually, I got to sit on a panel as well. And what did you speak on? Uh, the, it was on game design, which is okay. kind of funny because I've never designed a game. Huh. But uh, fortunately, my, the, the other two folks on the panel with me have both designed games, okay. multiple games. So they got to talk as game designers, and I got to talk about this, this person who helps game designers bring their bring product the to market. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. That was a lot of fun. I can see that. Uh, Rogue Shader, um, it looks like Twitch, yep. asked, did someone say Emperor's Children? Somebody did. How's it going, Jeff? Hi. We'll get him back on here one of these days. That would be cool. I'm working on trying to get Chris Gorka down here. Okay. Because he's just up in Jersey. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Nice and close. Yeah, Je just recently, I mean, Jeff's, Jeff's done a whole bunch of really beautiful Empress Children stuff okay. over the years. But at the moment, he's uh, messing around with a really interesting style, um, a very... Uh, non-metallic metal kind of approach. Okay. But to applying that approach to not necessarily metallic kind of uh, a metallic appearance. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I probably haven't explained that particularly well, have I, Jeff? But uh, I think you're doing just fine. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe Jeff could post some of those into the Painting happy little minis. Somebody's work in progress. Uh, That'd be cool. Shots in there. Oh, shiny yellow. There we go. He says it's infuriating. <laughs> He's killing it though. So definitely uh, post some of those pics into the group. Kelly, I think your miniatures are fine. They look great. She's talking about. You can tell how much of a noob I am when you get to see my dragon wolf miniature. It's probably going to be freaking amazing. Yep. Um, and everybody's just, occur encouragement, encouragement. Yes. Cool. Yep. But no, we'll go through and we'll pick out a, a bunch more and show them on Thursday. 
which will be cool. Hopefully, I'll have some of my uh, the minis I've been working on done by then. Nice. Been working on painting up uh, more of the uh, Harry Potter ah. minis. Those are night miniatures, right? Yep, night models. Night models. And they uh, painting those up for my daughter's birthday on Saturday. Oh. So I have to, I have to get those done. And how old will she be there now? She'll be turning ten. Wow. So still another year before she gets her letter from Hogwarts. If only that was a thing. Oh, it could totally be a thing. It might be like a, hey, we'd really like for you to come, but. On the Universal? Hmm? <laughs> well, well, they'll definitely send it. But she, actually, they probably have a thing where you can register. Mm -hmm. and, and when your kid turns 10, uh, turns 11, they'll send it. Yeah, that would be really cool. If they don't, they're missing a trick. So. I agree. We'll find out. So I watched The Crimes of Grim, Grimwald. This, uh, is that right, Grimwald? Grimwald. Sure. This, this, uh, this weekend. Cool. How was that? I enjoyed it. Um, I really like Newt Scamander as a as a character in that in that world. Right. Know. So, does it do you does it help to have seen the first one, Fantastic the, Beast? Uh, yes, absolutely does. Okay, right. Yeah. But if you haven't seen Fantastic Beast, could you come into it? Uh, you could, cold? but okay. I I wouldn't recommend it. Okay then. I would try it then. I think one of my favorite things about the not having watched any of the, the Wizarding mm -hmm. World movies yet um, is that Dumbledore, like right. in the in the thirties, yeah, was sort of a very dapper mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of guy, and then like, yep. It's like 70 years later. At some point, he just went, you know? I'm just going to accept my fate. I'm just going to wear a robe. Yep. I was going to say, moo moo and fluffy hat. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Comfortable. Yep. But, uh, yeah, kind of funny. No, it's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Not wrong. It is pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, My daughter and I are now uh, starting on Order of the Phoenix. Oh, nice. So everything's getting a lot darker. All right, Timothy. Timothy's back to the grind. Okay, mate. Have a good one. Enjoy. Great to see you on the weekend. And then uh, Byron's like, Stranger Things. Loved it. Yeah, Stranger yeah. Things is super awesome. It was. So have you seen there's that the D and D module mm -hmm. um, that uh, is based on it's yeah. based on the module that they're playing or the, the adventure that they're playing. Yeah. And the thing. Apparently. Yeah. And it could be completely anonymous, but there's confusion amongst some folks. Okay. Who think that it's a module about playing the characters that are in, in Stranger Things. Oh, not yeah. that not the D and D characters, but the actual actor's portrayal of the character that yes. they are in the show. Yep. So like Mike and yeah. Nah, that's. That. I don't know why that would be confusing. <laughs> <laughs> some, but, people, some people only read uh, read certain things. Yeah. Yeah, we actually did a little video for it, a game trade minute. Oh, cool. Awesome. The, what, for the box. Oh, was that with uh, Mia? Mia? Mm hmm. Excellent. Okay. Well, oh, oh, we better time. show some miniatures off here then, huh? Yep. Damn. I knew I should have got some silver on him. Oh. All right. Next time. Next time, oh, Gadget. Do we, have a, uh, do we have a close cam on the spinner? Yep. Excellent. Here, pop my guy on there. Well, I painted him that way. It's deliberate. No, just kidding. I'll show him under the, uh, oh, 
the close cam. Maybe. There we go. So yeah, just looking a little bit uh, better there. And these are coming along. Man, I feel like uh, I feel like such a failure. Why? I've only like mostly painted one model. I. And there's you. Mostly painted four. <laughs> They're coming along. So you went with the a black uh, black wash over the. So I did the, the flesh and the um, the the base browns yep. on the fur, and then I did a uh, dark wash right. over the whole model, and now I'm doing a brown wash over, like the sleeves and the pants, right, to kind of give it a more um, more leather leathery look, right. and then I'm going through with grays to hit like some of the fur, and and stuff. Right. And then, yeah, we'll see okay. what, what happens on Thursday to finish them off. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Cool. Sounds good. All right, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Make sure you go to your friendly local game store and become a member of that community. Yep. Uh, and also, we have a speaking of community, we have our uh, Painting Happy Little Minis group. And if you yeah, haven't uh, joined us over there, please do so and uh, invite all your friends. Just click that fun invite friends. Invite um, friends button. Yeah. Okay. Get more people in there. <laughs> but invite people that you think would really enjoy joining joining the group. Well, he said. So at the moment we are at we're back at 975 mm -hmm. thereabouts yeah. members. So uh, 25 more members and we'll do another something paint set giveaway. Maybe do we have another paint set. Uh, Maybe I can, something different. I, I, I'm thinking something different. I'm thinking like a box set. Okay. A starter oh, yeah. set of something. Oh wow. Okay. Yeah, that would be fun. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be awesome. So very cool. All right, everybody. I'm Rick. I'm Dave. And we'll see you at the game store. Thanks for watching Painting Happy Little Minis. If you liked it, leave a like and a comment below and make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any new content.